What's up YouTube? KS Gun Guy here to talk to you about a couple of competition options if you are looking to get into any sort of uh, local or regional or maybe even national uh, competitions. There are a lot of options out there and it can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming. So I've got in front of you a couple of really good uh, production class options uh, if you're if you're looking to, to potentially compete. I've got the uh, the Glock 34, which is certainly a competition staple uh, out there now. A lot of guys do use this. And then I've got the Smith & Wesson Performance Center 9L, and this is a Pro Series uh, right here. So I'm going to talk to you very briefly about some of the differences, some of the advantages or disadvantages of each. This is not going to be a terribly detailed review. I'm not going to take the two guns down and, and not going to get terribly into the nitty-gritty, just kind of compare and contrast and, and give you some thoughts as to which one you might want to potentially use to compete. Or, frankly, if you're looking for just a really fun range gun or potentially a home defense gun, something like that, these are also great options. I do not characterize either of these as carry guns. I know that some people do, but uh, for, for, for my taste, these guns are just too big. They're too long, uh, they're too heavy uh, to an extent. Um, I'll talk about the weights a little bit. Uh, these, these really, I, I would consider uh, full-size duty guns or even beyond. Uh, now, there are a lot of other options out there for competition. I don't have all of them, obviously. Um, another big one, at least in the polymer striker fire, uh, family is the uh, the Springfield XDM. I know they've got uh, they've got a, a a specific competition model, and I think it's like the 5.5 or 5.3, something like that. It is very similar to these as well, and I think Walther uh, also has one. I don't know, it's a, maybe a PPQ. Uh, or something like that that's also a 5-inch plus uh, model. So those, those are going to be a couple of other really good options for you. Um, I don't have experience with either one of those. I, I've shot a couple of Springfields, but not the competition model. Um, and I understand it, uh, it has very similar shooting characteristics to these. Uh, just with a with a really good trigger. So um, I'll talk about the trigger of these, of course. But uh, uh, but again, those are other options. And then you get into things like 1911s, that sort of thing. But I but I I, I don't put those in the same class as these simply because these are polymer striker fired uh, handguns versus uh, 1911s, which are usually steel frame or steel and maybe alloy, and they usually are are hammer fired. Um, so there there are going to be some differences there. So. Of course, uh, as we get started, both of these are unloaded and will remain loaded throughout this brief review, just so you can see there. So why do I have both of these? Why have I, I chosen to have these in my collection? Um, frankly, I, I just I, I really like the shooting characteristics of both. I've competed with the Glock 34 on a number of times, and, and uh, it has certainly been to the range uh, uh, more times than, than, than I can count. I, I really have stopped uh, tracking the round count of this. I mean, I, I would say this is between four and 5,000 rounds through this um, with this uh, particular barrel, uh, which I'll talk about here in a moment. The Smith I don't have quite as much experience with. I've really just recently started working with uh, Smith & Wesson firearms. If you've seen my other full-size review with the regular full-size and the VTAC, um, and then I've got this, and um, I, I, I just did a review on the uh, 9C versus the Glock 26, um, and, then, and then the Shields as well. So I'm, I'm just really starting to discover Smith & Wesson, and, and so far I've been uh, pleasantly surprised. Um, so um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and talk about uh, why I've chosen to get into Smith & Wesson a little bit, and it has to do with ergonomics. For me, both of these guns are very ergonomic, but they're ergonomic in different ways. So the Glock 34, this is a Gen 3 Glock 34. And those of you who are into Glocks uh, know there are some differences between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4. One of the biggest ones is the grip. The grip on the Gen 4, um, and you can't really see the grip on this. This has a talon grip on it. I'll, I'll, I'll explain more of that here in a moment. But, uh, but the Gen 4 has a slightly more aggressive grip, um, and that's what I have on my 26 and my 19, and I really like it. I don't think it requires any, uh, any extra work, any grip tape or stippling or anything, even though I know a lot of people are really into that sort of thing, the, the stippling. I'm, I'm generally speaking not. Um, you may have seen a, a Zebtech lock that I did uh, just a few days ago, and it did have some pretty cool stippling on it. 
I may someday change my mind, but 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 it's not in the works at this point in time. That being said, this Gen 3, I think the Gen 3 grips are just a little too slick, so I did add a, a Talon grip uh, on this. And and so this, this it, it made it just tacky enough and just ergonomic enough and gave it just a tiny bit more beef in the hands. Um, and, and I really like it quite a bit. Uh, now, the Gen 3 is another, another difference between that and the Gen 4. The Gen 3s do not have any sort of changeable back strap. I did bring these in. These are actually for, I think it might have been for a, a, a 17, a Gen 4 17 that I used to have. Uh, but these uh, back straps are for the Gen 4, so that gives you a little bit more of an option. Uh, if that's really important to you, perhaps the Gen 4 might be the way to go. And frankly, if I could do this again, I probably would have just gone with a Gen 4, but that was not an option when I bought this gun. This gun is old enough to where it, it precedes the uh, uh, the Gen 4s, or the Gen 4s were just out when this uh, uh, when I got this gun. So um, uh, the, the other difference between this and the, uh, the Gen 4, significant difference, is the mag release. This is a small mag release, although it is extended, so um, it's easy to reach and, and easy to manipulate. I've never had a problem with this versus Gen 4 guns. It works just fine for me. But the gun sits very well in my hand. Um, it's got a low bore axis, uh, so that uh, that means less recoil and uh, less flop when you're shooting. It comes straight back uh, versus driving the gun upward. Um, I don't generally uh, notice that very much in guns. I don't mind a higher bore axis, but for the Glock anyways, uh, this works very well for me. So from an ergonomic standpoint for the Smith & Wesson, and I do have to give a lot of props to Smith & Wesson, they did some things right with, with all of their M&P line, their full size and, and even their 9C, but especially uh, the, the Pro and the Core, uh, which I don't have. Core, of course, being the optics-ready version of this. The grip angle um, is, I think, maybe a degree or two uh, less, so this really matches a 1911 uh, grip angle, so it's a very natural grip angle and it just sits very well in the hands. Now, uh, there are interchangeable back straps for this. I'll wheel these in for just a moment. Uh, it comes with three back straps here as these fall apart. So you do have some options uh, to customize the grip a little bit. And I really like the Pro and the Core back straps. These are a little bit more aggressive than the standard M&P back straps. Uh, these are less slick, so they've got a little bit more aggressive, uh, we'll call it stippling in there, but just more aggressive texture, really. I wish I could find these back straps uh, aftermarket. I, I've struggled to find uh, these not only on the Smith & Wesson website, but eBay, that sort of thing. I really can't find them because I would actually add these to my VTAC, which uh, is a permanent resident of the uh, of the collection. Uh, this Pro, eh, maybe, maybe not. I'm really not sure since I'm not competing with it. But I love these back straps. Um, the rest of the grip, it's pretty slick. I know there's some texture up here in the front strap, but, but frankly, it's pretty slick. So you're really kind of dependent upon uh, this back strap here. Of course, you could stipple it, uh, that sort of thing, and I know a lot of guys do. Um, that's certainly an option. Again, I, I'm not really uh, big into that so much. So aside from ergonomics, uh, there are definitely some other things uh, that I consider when doing any sort of uh, competing or doing some, some range shooting, especially if I'm going for more accuracy. Although, if you've seen my other videos, I am not a, a precision shooter by any means. I really go more for center mass. Uh, rather than precision, but if I'm really trying to hit uh, a target or go for a uh, bullseye, then, then I'm really dependent upon uh, several things with these firearms, one of which is the sights. As you know, I'm not a fan of uh, Glock sights, although the uh, the 34, the 35, uh, the 40, the 41, some of these uh, these long slide Glocks do come with a slightly upgraded polymer sight, if you can call it that. Uh, by, by that I mean that you can actually adjust the back for, for height and windage. That's all fine and good, but I kind of consider it a little bit gimmicky. Um, so I always change out the sights on my Glocks, and for this one, I actually went with the uh, the True Glow uh, TFX. So these do have the fiber optic in them, so they, they really pick up a lot of light on the range. But they also have tritium vials in it for night sights. Um, if I'm, if I'm going to do sights on a gun, generally speaking, I do want night sights. Uh, even though this isn't a carry gun, I just like that option. And, and frankly, if I can get uh, both uh, the fiber optic and the night sights, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So these sights have done very well for me. I really like them quite a bit. Uh, the sights on the Smith & Wesson Pro... 
These are all steel sights, and these are a little bit different than uh, the other MMPs. Uh, the other MMPs are steel uh, Novak style sights, just with the the three white dots. Uh, the Pro is a little bit different, and uh, and the core even a little bit more so, which I'll, I'll tell you in a moment. But this is going to be all steel, and it's blacked out in back. However, it's not serrated, so it doesn't uh, compensate for glare at all, which I think is a little bit of a miss for Smith & Wesson. But I do like the fact that there's a small fiber optic up front. And frankly, at the range, uh, this, this picks up really well, and um, and it shoots true. It, it, it's not a six o'clock hold. It's, it's really right on. So uh, I do, surprisingly, I like these sights more than I really thought I would. Um, so if, if this does become a 100% permanent resident here, um, I wouldn't consider changing these out. These do just fine. Um, again, because it's not a self-defense gun, and, and it's not a home defense gun either for me. This really is a safe queen until I'm going to the range or, or maybe doing some competing with it down the road who knows uh, but uh, but so there there are some differences with the sites there um, there might be a little bit of added value with the Smith & Wesson because you don't necessarily have to change the sites out right away not to say that you do with the Glock either but but I if I were to recommend I would say definitely do it now as far as triggers go um, this th this is where things get a little bit more cloudy with the Smith & Wesson this is a performance center Pro, uh, so it does have an enhanced trigger. Um, I don't think uh, that that it's apex or anything like that. I, I just think that they tune them a little bit more in the performance center. But I have to say, as far as uh, what we'll call stock uh, M and P triggers, the Pro has done a great job. So so there's definitely some uptake here. I'll, I'll move my finger out of the way. Uh, there is uptake, but it's extremely smooth, and it really doesn't matter where I hit on the trigger as long as I'm not pulling straight up uh, to activate the safety hinge. It just goes straight back, and you hit a very defined wall, and it's a nice audible break. Um, it, uh, it does drift a little bit after the break, but not very much. It's very smooth. And then it's got a very short reset, um, which is really nice. It's a great trigger. It was a, it was a pleasant surprise on the range. Uh, I was very impressed with uh, with this right out of the box. Now, so so again, out of the box, the trigger on this is 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 pretty spot on, and I don't see any reason to do any changing on it unless you wanted to lighten it up. I would say it probably does. It probably does fall into the five and a half, maybe six pound range. Um, I don't have a trigger gauge that's on the wish list. Uh, but it but it's a pretty standard trigger. Um, it's just very smooth, so I don't mind a heavier trigger as long as it's really smooth, a good quality pull to it. So Glocks are a little different, as uh, any of you Glock uh, fans know. Out of the box, the uh, the even the, even the thirty fours they don't have any special tuning or anything like that, or at least not to my knowledge. Now I know back when I bought this, they didn't. It was a standard Glock trigger, so we're talking you know six or five and a half to six and a half pounds. Uh, standard pull. So another requirement for me, since this was a competition gun, was actually to ditch the trigger completely. In fact, this is a, a Vogel competition trigger in here. Um, if, if I could do it again, I probably would go with a, a Zev trigger. I think they're a little bit higher quality. However, uh, this adjustable Vogel uh, competition trigger has done just fine for me, and um, it is it has certainly smoothed out the uh, the trigger and lightened the pull considerably. In fact. This has this has some uptake. It has some air in it, but uh, but very clean, very smooth, and it may be a four and a half pound trigger, um, maybe five pound trigger, but it's incredibly smooth, and the reset is very short. In fact, the reset could be shorter uh, since this is adjustable, but but I find if it is too short, I almost naturally just want to press the trigger again and not. Uh, not be able to stop, so um, so I'm, I'm I do have a little bit more of a reset in there, but but again uh, the aftermarket trigger and, and and I'm sure it's the same with some of the other uh, aftermarket companies, uh, Apex, uh, Zev, some of those other companies. They make great triggers, but this one is fantastic on the range. I absolutely love it. It does exactly what I need it to do, and it's not so light that it takes me by surprise. I, I'm I'm not big into 
two and a half, three pound triggers. I know some people are. That that's not that that's not what I'm after. I want something very, very smooth and, and maybe a, a little bit light. So this does the job for sure. Um, so so all of the trigger components uh, are changed out. All of the springs are changed out. Um, basically everything is Zev with the exception of this Vogel trigger here. All the other springs and everything are all Zev springs. Uh, uh, another thing, barrels. Um, obviously this is not the uh, the stock barrel. This is a Zevtech uh, dimpled bronze barrel. Um, I didn't do it to improve any sort of accuracy or anything like that. If you've seen my Glock 19 video, same deal. It's got the silver dimpled barrel. I just like the way they look. I think they're kind of cool. Uh, so I decided to do that. Um, it, to me, it was money well spent. Um, not, not that it makes me a better shooter, but, uh, but I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, the Smith, I obviously haven't done any sort of aftermarket parts or any bling or anything like that with it, um, and, and I haven't really felt a need to. Uh, it's got a stock barrel. It does just fine. Again, this, this may or may not be a permanent resident. I just haven't decided yet, so I'm not going to invest any more money in it. Versus the Glock, I don't mind dumping more money in it. It's not a big deal. All right, so enough talking about these. Let's take a look at a little bit of range footage and see how these guys do.
Welcome back. So I hope you enjoyed that range footage. So um, I, I took both of these out on the same day and did a little bit of uh, comparison shooting between the two. And I, it was, it's kind of funny. When I first bought the Smith and immediately uh, brought it home, cleaned it, then took it to the range, I felt like the bullets had uh, honing beacons in them. They, they could not miss the target. Um, it, it shot exclu exquisitely well. When I took these two together, the Smith didn't have as good of a day. Um, and, and as you know, um, you can have good or bad days at the range, or some guns you shoot better and some guns you shoot worse at different times. It happened to be that uh, the, the Glock 34 just shot better. Part of it might be because I'm just used to it. I shoot it more, and, and part of it could be that that day I happen to shoot a, a little bit better. Uh, but the, the Glock 34 is just a wonderful shooter, and um, I, I find it hard to find a... Uh, uh, a gun in this class that uh, that that I prefer more than this, to be honest with you. Um, it just to to me, from a shooting standpoint, um, after spending the money and, and making some modifications, making this my own, th this is this is the clear winner to me. In in my opinion, of course, your mileage may vary. You may prefer whether it's ergonomics or or aftermarket support for one brand over another, whether it's these two or Springfield or Walther or a 1911, something like that. Um, you may be one of those, uh, but uh, but uh, of course these definitely are two very good, uh, reasonable options. The weight on the two, now here's where we start getting into a few more differences. Glocks are notoriously light, and that remains true with this, and part of it might be because they took the time to mill out a little bit of the slide to reduce some of the weight on this gun, and keep this as close to the full size 17 as they possibly could. In fact, it's very close. The Glock weighs 25.95 ounces, so just shy of 26. Now the Smith, uh, with uh, in both of these, uh, with a with an unloaded magazine. So so again, the Glock uh, 25.95 ounces, and the Smith 28.5 ounces. So there are a few more ounces in there now. From a uh, accuracy standpoint, perhaps an argument could be made that a little bit more weight is going to keep you a little bit more accurate or make for easier follow-up shots. That may be true. Um, I still like the fact that the Glock is just a little bit lighter. Uh, and then you would add roughly seven, seven and a half ounces with uh, full magazines for each of those. And speaking of magazines, again, I guess I did mention that before, but they're both 17 round magazines, of course. Again, which one is better? Um, your mileage may vary. And uh, even though I prefer the Glock, and that's largely because I've just had a lot of time behind it, it's been a, a wonderful gun and, and will remain in the collection forever. Uh, even if I, for whatever reason, go broke, this gun stays uh, more than any other gun. Maybe the Glock 19 would be a close second, but Glock 34 first. Um, they're both great guns. So they both serve their purpose. They do their job. Um, and along with the, the other uh, guns in the, in, the, uh, in the running for these, like the, the Springfield and that sort of thing, they're all great guns. Uh, so hopefully this video has helped you out if you're looking for getting into some competition uh, from a production standpoint, maybe IDPA, something like that, or if you're looking for a really good range gun or a home defense gun, uh, these are, are two great options for you. So I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear what you think if you have experience with these or some other guns uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the running, so to speak. And, uh, and otherwise, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you later. Thanks again.